gentlemen if you are not a member of my patreon and you're thinking to yourself why is she wearing a headphone with a microphone on it and i'm going to tell you why because the answer is why wouldn't you wear this brothers it looks like i'm about to do a ted talk it looks like i'm about to sell you something it looks like I am trying to be a motivational speaker on Instagram, moving my hands around to convince you to buy something from me, but I'm not. The only thing I'm trying to convince you of is that everyone who has a podcast should have one of these. And I know I'm going to take a lot of heat online for this. I know it. And you know what? I don't care. Because the ease in which I can podcast now, I mean, look at this. Let me, let me just demonstrate. I'm going to go from this, where it's blocking my neck, my trachea, my chest area, to this. Which one do you prefer, A or B? It doesn't matter, because I'm going to wear B. Also, when I was on the uh, Patreon talking about this headset, I said, if it's good enough for Kenny Loggins, it's good enough for me. And I was informed by my friend who is named Not Ear Human that this is not Kenny Loggins, but Brooks and Dunn. And that's fine. I don't have to know who every musical artist is, but if you look at this picture, who does it look like? It looks like Kenny Loggins singing Highway to the Danger Zone, yeah. With such ease, I'm able to sing. Such ease, I'm able to talk, enunciate, use my hands, and say, I can't believe it. Guys, couple... Uh, Guys, there's some guys, a couple uh, storage spaces down that are having band practice. And they sound so good that I thought it was a, a record playing. <laughs> a record. I thought it was a, a track. And then I heard him, you know, like, tch, 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 do the drums like they're practicing. They sound really good. And they they sang that song um, that's from one of the fellas that's on... Uh, What's that program uh, with the kids and they go to the other realm? Uh, Stranger Things. So I guess one of the fellows on there, I guess multiple of the fellows on there have bands. And um, they were just singing it. It sounded great. And when I go back to Chicago, how That song. Oh, also, before I even get ahead of myself, Chelsea made um, Salisbury steak. And it was delicious, and we were eating it, and I was sitting at the table, and I looked over at my phone, and it said, um, didn't I screenshot it? Yes, I did. It said, Pitbull liked your reel. Then it said, uh, <laughs> Pitbull mentioned you in their story. I'm just going to put it up here. You can see that I have Billy Gelman as my background. Uh, <laughs> wow, that question right above it. The storage podcast that I, I talked about, Pitbull, it was probably a year ago. He he mentioned me in his story the last time I did it and, and put it. And um, he did it again. I guess he forgot that I did it. And, and I am on Pitbull's story right now. By the time you see this, I won't be. But just know... That I am on Pitbull's story. Man, my lips are drier than the sand in the desert. Where's my little mirror? I'm glad to be back here with you. Ooh. Okay. Wow. Wow. A couple hairs on the chin. I'm glad to be back here with you. 
This is the first week back where I don't have a guest. The next time you'll see me, I will have a guest who is a comic here in Nashville. Her name is Amber Autry. She's hilarious, and she'll be my first uh, painter. Does Amber know that we're painting? No. Does Amber know that she is going to be wearing a headset and we will probably be doing baseball announcer voice the whole time? Yes, she does know that. I informed her. Had a big overhaul of the storage space here, cleaned everything out and dusted so that when people come in here, they're not sneezing from the dust. Man, they are rocking over there. Ah, can you hear that through my... I keep wanting to call this a headphone. It's not a headphone. It's called a... Micro mic, the original. Wow, the original. If it's good enough for Brooks and Dunn, it's good enough for me. And I don't think I could name a Brooks and Dunn song... If I had to, if somebody said, if you don't name a Brooks and Dunn song, you're going to pass away. I guess it's lights out for me, brothers, because I don't know one. Now, if I heard one on the radio, I probably be like, oh, I know this song, but I would would not know that it's them. I'm going to turn this so I stop looking in it because it's really irritating, isn't it? Oh, I am fresh off of the. God, my lips, man. I am fresh off of the Tammy's pontoon party. And if you don't know what that is, first of all, where have you been? And secondly, Tammy's pontoon party is a cruise that we took where Tammy, uh, trailer trash Tammy, um, she didn't buy the boat, but her together with six men made... The most fun cruise that I've ever had in my life and one of the most fun weekends I've ever had in my life. It was a three-day cruise. <laughs> Nothing could have prepared me for the level of, of fun that we had. And we were working. Even though we were working, we were having so much fun. What happened on the cruise? Well... You can either listen to me tell you here, or I have a little vlog that Harry made for me, and he put, um, well, I put it on my YouTube. I got, I'm sorry, I have to look at my ear. It feels like it's going wacky. First day of the cruise. Oh, wow! Yeah, baby! Let's take a picture. <laughs> oh, yeah! Did you see I put my hand on my tit? First day of the cruise um, was crazy because the people that were working the cruise, me, Chelsea, Tina, Rafe, Paige, Brett, Justina. Harry wasn't working, but he was with me. He was working on his own own thing. He was the uh, being the unofficial vlogger of the cruise. Um. Maggie, Beth, I mean, everyone was there except Gary. Gary was not there. We got to go, we got to enter the ship through a, a different way than the general public got to go through. And um, it reminded me very much of when I went on the New Kids Cruise and we had to stand in line for hours. And then the New Kids came in, walking by, waving. And we were all screaming, hi! Ah! That's what it reminded me of, except I felt like I was a new kid because people were screaming for us. That's enough right there to make a person cry. And I know that people know who I am. I know people listen to my podcast, but when you're face to face with someone that you've never met, a stranger, and they say, hey, Libby, they know your name. That is so wild to me every time. It's so wild. And we were we were working right away. As soon as we got on that boat, we went up to our rooms, which, again, I felt like a new kid. My room was beautiful. I had uh, the most beautiful shower you've ever seen. It was a big shower with a place to sit. And just over your shoulder, you can look right out the window at the ocean. 
or at that time, I think I took a shower pretty before we even left the port. I took a shower, and the, you could see people over there. I gotta make sure not to get this on anything, or it'll make a scratchy sound. And of course, before we could even leave, it was pouring down rain, and that pretty much made all the activities that we had planned out on the deck uh, void and null. So they had to figure out how to fit everyone inside of this one area for the the cruise away, or what's it called? Ship away. What's it called? Deck dock off. Whatever you call it. And we got on stage. Um, <laughs> the screams in that place were unbelievable. Screaming even louder than a, a Tammy show. A Tammy show, the, cr the crowds are so wild. But this screaming nearly not only knocked my seat socks off, it almost knocked me off of the stage. And the rest of the night, it just rained. So we didn't get to do any of the other. We were supposed to play Family Feud out on the deck. Uh, couldn't do that. Had to switch that to another night. I think that night, that first night, um, we did the first of, of Tammy's show. So Tammy filled her, filmed her first comedy special on the cruise. And each night that we did stand up, they recorded her set so that when they do the special, they can take, you know, bits and pieces of the best sets or the best audiences or whatever. And doing a comedy, I had 10 minutes. Tina had 10. Rafe had 10. Um, doing comedy on the very front of a ship is kind of crazy because you feel the movement of the ship and it was rocking and rolling and I'm already unsteady on my feet. And what Tammy did before the show even started, before any of us came out, she came out and said, Hey, and she came out as Chelsea. Hey guys, I'm filming my first special I need you guys to be on your best behavior is basically what she told them. Um, because what it was happening is that because everyone had to stay inside for like four or five or six hours, everybody was just putting them back, putting them back. And everybody was a little rowdy, which is fine for, a re well, it's not really fine for a regular show. It's fine. Everybody was having fun. But for her special... She just needed regular laughter. She didn't need people screaming out, Hey, bitch, suck my titty or whatever. So she said, Hey, look, you got no chances. If you yell out inappropriately, you're gone. And before she even got on stage for her set, I think one person per comic, me, Tina Rafe, was kicked out. And they didn't go quietly. These people didn't go quietly. And you could tell they were inebriated because they were arguing with security. Are ah, you fucking, bitter fucking wild? But by the t time Tammy came up there, the crowd was ready. And <laughs> she, ki uh, she killed it the first night. She said she messed up like a little, one little thing. But she killed it the first night. If they had to say, hey, this is going to be your special, the first night, it would have been fine. Because it was incredible. Uh, then after that show, I went back to my room, got um, freshened up a bit. <laughs> then went to do karaoke with Billy Gelman for about four hours, which to me, a little long for karaoke, especially when you're sober. I was sober. Um, when you're sober and everyone else in the room is not sober, it's, it's a wild thing because at some point, the singing just becomes screaming. Fun either way. Not complaining. Fun. Love that I got to hang out with Billy Gilman. You could probably see him. He's over there. I don't know if you can see him. Got a CD. I got to not only do karaoke with Billy Gilman. I got to hang out with Billy Gilman all weekend. As much as I could. The Billy Gilman. And if you know me, you know I love, you know I love Billy Gilman. See, I can just do whatever I want with my hands. I love Billy Gilman. 
the night before we had a Airbnb that Chelsea rented and it fit, I think 24 people, which is ridiculous. And I was in the bed with Harry. Um, across from us was, <laughs> was a bed for Billy. Um, Sarah and Danielle were in a bed over there. And I think this bed was empty. There were four beds, four queen size beds in there. And at one point, Billy goes, I think this is actually a garage. This used to be a garage. And um, Billy said something along the lines of, well, you have your career highs and your career lows. <laughs> and we're sleeping in a garage, which is so funny to me. I don't, if you don't know Billy Gilman, you need to follow him because he is hysterical. I love him so much. He's family to me. And the first week after the cruise, I missed him so much. I want him to live with me in my home and be with me at all times. All right, so that was night one. Um, didn't get much sleep. Got in bed probably at three on Friday night. The party was going on the whole night. Saw Harry in between each little thing. He was, um, and let me be clear. Harry was um, on vacation. He bought a ticket to get on the boat. So it would have been very unfair for me to be like, hey, you need to stay with me at all times. I was not, um, I mean, at first I was kind of like, man, I wish he was coming with me to every event. But then I thought, he paid for this trip. He's, I don't want him sitting here with me as I'm, because I am working. Even though I was having fun, I was working. And it would have been very unfair of me to have asked him to um, not enjoy his vacation. And the thing about Harry is he loves to, one, explore. He loves talking to people. He'll talk to anybody. And he's really getting into his photography and his camera stuff and learning, you know, how to shoot and stuff like that. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, he had the best vacation ever because he got to see and film stuff for me that I would not have been able to see because I just didn't have enough time and I would never have been able to, to see all the shit he did. All right. Day two, day two, woke up early. Did, let me go back to Friday while I'm doing karaoke. There's also other events going on around the boat. Um, for instance, Billy Gilman was doing his event. Um, Clayton and Laura had their event going on. Mini Kiss, uh, the Fleetwood Mac tribute band. There was so many different kind of events going on. Beth and Maggie did a pub, a pub crawl. There were so many events going on that there's no way that one person could be able to see all of them. All right. Saturday woke up, did a wet t-shirt contest with Beth and Tina. We were the judges. Again, it was raining, so they had to change it from the pool to indoors, which kind of sucked because the people had to spray themselves instead of um, jumping in water. And I voted based on length. Tina voted on nipple size, and Beth voted on performance. And saw a lot of big old honking long titties, and it nothing made me happier. Hmm. After that, there was supposed to be a belly flop contest, and I don't know if it happened again because it was raining. What else happened on Saturday? There was a live mukbang with Chelsea and Daryl. Chelsea had a, um, a picture opportunity, they call it a photo op, with half of the people on the boat, I believe. I think she did two or three sessions that were like three hours long. Um... What else did I do that day? We had another show that night. And then I did karaoke again that night with Billy Gilman. Just so much stuff going on. I never got to see Kiss perform. Wanted to see Mini Kiss. Um, damn, so much stuff. But anytime I wasn't in, in, a, in an event, I would try to either grab some food or quick, get a quick nap or take a shower. Because I never knew when I was going to have to head somewhere. I mean, I did. I knew my schedule, but 
sometimes I'd be like, ooh, let me grab my scooter and go see if I could take some pictures of people or meet some people. Because I tried to do that a lot, even though the first time, and I feel like I've already talked about this. I don't know if I talked about this with you guys. <laughs> Sorry, reading my... So the first day we, on the floor that we stayed on, we had like a private eating area, a little pool and a hot tub. And the eating area didn't have food constantly. And the first day I asked the, the lady Maria, who was my, uh, turned out to be my bodyguard for the weekend. Um, I was like, hey, where, where else can I get some food? And she said down on 12. And in my brain, I'm thinking 12 was the area that we were supposed to eat. I didn't know that that was the buffet for the whole boat so when the when the doors open people started screaming libby libby like i am a beetle the beetle and i'm not lying i got a little scared i was afraid because it kind of like threw me i wasn't ready and i tried to go into the buffet and and a lot of people were very excited i was excited too but i wasn't ready and i was i got really scared and i Ran back upstairs. Didn't run. Walked slowly. Went back upstairs and um, kind of sat for a while. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go back down there. And, and after that, I was fine. I just wasn't prepared. Food was okay. Ate a lot of um, burgers. Because that was a quick thing. I could just eat a burger and some fries. Whew, what else happened on Saturday? I mean, jam-packed. At some point, did it stop raining on Saturday or Sunday? At some point, it did stop raining, and we got to see a sunset that was so beautiful. I'm trying to think. I'm always checking for bugs. Oh, my God, there's so many bugs. You guys tell me you guys just gonna let me sit here with that or with these bugs in my nose dude i mean there's a whole bunch of them you guys are just gonna let me sit here with boogers in my nose i can't believe it day three what what happened on sunday morning uh sunday morning i did a mukbang with chelsea on stage and that was fun wild and every time i would say when tammy was a child people would just scream with laughter which made me so happy because i often say that in mukbangs that i do with chelsea when she was a child and i'll get really crystal will get really emotional what else happened? A lot of, um, took a lot of pictures on Sunday. God, what else did I do? It's a blur. Then, of course, Sunday night. Oh, that was the day that everybody got, we got to the Bahamas. Everybody who wanted to get off could get off and go look at the island, do whatever, go to a beach day. We had to film some stuff for Tammy's special, so I could not get off the boat. Wouldn't have wanted to anyway. It would have been too much for me, I think. We did that. I got a little rest time. Then we had the final uh, show for Chelsea's special. It was the third show. Um, she nailed it again. She nailed all three nights. And she felt really good about her performance. Um, and the audience audiences were <sighs> crazy. Wild. Not wild in a bad way, but just un Unreal. Unreal. That last, did I do karaoke that last night? I think I did it that last night, but not as long. Um, and then after that, I took my scooter with Harry and we just went all over. Went to like the casino and took pictures. We rode around um, the front of the ship. We just went everywhere and took pictures with people. And I'm telling you, that scooter saved me. I would have not... I would have not been able to, to have, I would not have, I would have not been okay. That ship was huge. I would have not been able to get to each area efficiently, quickly, 
without being in the most amount of pain. Was I in a lot of pain? Yes, but not in an extra amount of pain. Okay, that's not true. I was in a lot of pain, but because I had the scooter, it was manageable, and I knew I could get from point B to point C, point A to X, from L to M efficiently and without a great amount of pain. And I know I shouldn't focus on negative comments, but I did get one comment where a guy was like, oh, you're on a scooter, you need to be exercising. Excuse me, sir, I am disabled. You don't get to say when I need exercise. I do exercise when I want to. It's amazing how one comment can throw you. A hundred beautiful, kind comments. People glad to see content from the crews. And I get one guy and he just <sighs> tries to ruin it for everyone. It's ableist. You're being an ableist, sir. That's why there's so much shame for larger people to use mobility devices. Because of comments like that. They assume, oh, you're big. You're lazy. Now, while I am big, I'm not lazy. And even if I was, even if I was riding on a scooter because I was lazy, that would be okay because that's my choice. And I'll go around telling you how you get to and fro. If I see a guy on a skateboard, I say, oh, God, get off the skateboard. You're being lazy. I don't. Let me look at you. Do you like how I have to show my face? <sighs> That's why there's so much shame around mobility devices and i got my own mobility device that one i rented for the for the cruise but i have my own scooter now that makes my life so much easier you can't even comprehend i can go to places that i haven't been able to go to in quite a long time just because i cannot stand in a long line um let me take that back i can stand in a long line but that's going to increase my pain to the point of i'll be done after that after i go to that store and i stand in that line guess what going home and can't do nothing else this scooter has given me back a freedom dude it's really made it a lot easier and i don't know if you guys watch slap city that i do with tina but we've talked about this on slap city my scooter when we're on tour and the girls go somewhere like antiquing or something on a day off i can't go because i know that i cannot comfortably keep up with them now that i have this scooter which only weighs 32 pounds which is extremely light i'm able to go with them and i don't have to miss out and then i don't have to feel sad And I come from a, a place of, uh, I, I feel like it's, I feel very privileged that I was able to buy it. My insurance company did not get it for me. I was able to buy it on my own. And I feel very privileged that I was able to do that because it was not cheap. And I told Tina on Slop, I was like, if I ever get to a point where I get all the surgeries that I need to help my mobility, I will then gift that to another person who needs it that maybe can't afford it. Because I do, I feel guilty that I'm able to, I was able to buy it. Why? I don't know. Speaking of guilt, not to change the subject, but have you guys watched my episode of um, the Honeydew podcast with Ryan Sickler? It was really good. It can be very triggering. There are some topics that I talk about in depth about um, some trauma as a child. Um, you probably know a lot about that already. You know that I had a lot of trauma as a child, but I went kind of into really detail about it. 
And if you're interested, go watch that. I was, um, at first I was like, did I, did I say too much? Was I too vulnerable? But then I started to get feedback from people who were like, thank you so much for sharing this. Um, this happened to me or, um, this helped me. So I was like, you know what? It's worth it. It was worth it. I want to take this flipper out so bad. It's like. I'm going in, I'm going in the next, <laughs> I hate the way it sounds without, and I hate the way it sounds within, um, it sounded very poetic, I hate the way it sounds without it, and I hate the way it sounds with it, and oh, I hate the way it sounds without it and i hate the way it sounds with it what the hell was i even talking about oh i'm going in a couple weeks to get my first consultation about getting the the implant place the bone graft has finally finally done this thing it's apparently turned into bone which i don't understand how that's possible you can put a dead person's bone inside of your hole in your mouth and then it becomes a hard bone i don't understand the science behind it but apparently my bone is good enough to st stick something in there <sighs> and i've already inquired um if i've already asked them you know am i able to be sedated during this because i don't think i'm going to be okay oh god i can already just imagine the drilling and everything oh gonna faint so if you pray pray for me pray for me it's so weird because these ring lights are so bright probably too bright and when i close it it looks like the eclipse yesterday with just the red around the edge and the the sun did you all see the eclipse were you surprised that it was not the end of the world because i heard a few things that some people thought it was the day that the world was gonna end and maybe it did end and i just i don't know that maybe this is the afterlife do you think this is the afterlife wow that'd be weird if this was the afterlife and we just go about our business normally like just regular i guess that's good i guess that's good if the alternative is going downstairs to burn in eternal flames i guess those guys are still rocking out over there what am i focusing on what am i going to focus on the next couple of weeks months while we're not touring well i'm going to try to get get in to more shows around the nashville area um independent shows maybe zanies i want to try to do my own thing if you will um of course always working on my youtube content putting stuff out on patreon dare i say right dare i say right writing for me you know how it is it's such a problem for me i cannot do it i have such a hard time writing but those are my goals write perform content oh i've got some traveling in the future too i'm traveling with um harold to puerto puerta vallarta never know how to say it let me look it up right now i say it wrong every time and it's because i i'll just say let's go to pv and i know what you're thinking oh you must got a lot of money because you're traveling so much well i know a fella that owns a place down there so it's very inexpensive for us to go there 
All right, I'm searching PV. Oh my God, it says Rapture Eclipse was the last thing I looked up. Puerto Vallarta. Weather. The weather there is beautiful. The beaches that I saw last time, not so much. <sighs> Which is kind of depressing because if you know me, you know I love rolling around on a beach. Back and forth in the water. Back and forth. Back and forth. Because I can't get in and out of the water easily. So what do I do? I let the water take me to and fro. I love it. There's nothing I love more than laying down parallel to the waves and letting it push me in and out of the water. I don't know why. And if, I, if I'm getting out of the water and I happen to uh, get knocked over by a wave, what do I do? I swim on back out to the water where I can easily stand up because the water makes me feel like my legs don't hurt. It makes me feel like my legs don't have lipedema. It makes me feel reborn and alive. So I go out into the water and I'll stand up. And then I'll try it again. And if I get knocked over, guess what? Guess who's rolling back into the ocean? Me. You're not going to see me fumbling around to get back up. You ain't going to see that. There is a bug inside of the ring light. I've had it with bugs. My God. I've had it with bugs. Oh. And I just have to get used to them because if I'm in a basement, I'm going to see bugs in my basement. <sighs> The centipedes. If you weren't here for the centipede stories, oh my God, I got bitten by a centipede. I got bitten by two centipedes. I've talked about this on a mukbang. I've talked about this um, on Slap City, but if you don't listen or watch those, I was bitten by two different centipedes two different times while laying in my bed innocently. The first time I was dead asleep, and thought Annie was putting a little hook in my back, one of her little claws, and I brushed it like that. And I felt it again. I thought, damn, what is Annie doing? And I wake up, you know, I keep doing my back like this. I wake, sit up on my arms like this. Sorry. And look on the pillow and a centipede centipede is crawling at the time i didn't know it was a centipede because i've never seen a centipede in real life so what i did was take a box and get that centipede in the box well no that's not true first i took the pillow went and put it by the bathroom so that i could scurry and look for a box found the box put it in the box ran upstairs walked upstairs and said to maggie i'm scared the girls were getting ready for school and everything. I said, I'm scared. This just bit me. And I showed her. <sighs> and she goes, that's a centipede. And they looked it up. It's an eastern bark centipede. The bite on my back got this big. It was huge. It felt like someone was sticking a hot needle. A hot needle with hot lava on it. <sighs> and in my brain, I was like, that's a once in a lifetime chance that a centipede was crawling in my bed and bit me while I was sleeping. Once in a lifetime. I'd say if, if a mathematician was to take a, a, an abacus and he would move those things to, to the side or however they do it, he would say, you have a one in one millionth chance of getting bit by a centipede more than once in your lifetime. In your bed. Well, lo and behold, I move my bed over to the other side of the room away from the windows because there was construction going on in my room. I needed to move it. I'm looking, I'm laying in bed naked, looking at my phone. Hold on a minute. Harold's calling. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. Harold. Hey, how's it going? Can you guys hear me? 
Well, nobody can respond. I can hear you. You can hear me? I How can... you doing? I'm doing good. Um, I was just telling the people in storage the story of me getting bitten by a caterpillar I ha- or a centipede. I haven't told the second part. Um, I've told that story on Slop City, but I have not told it on storage. Okay. So I'm just I'm just updating you what I was doing. What are you up to? I'm driving to work, just left the gym. But go ahead, tell your story. And I remember I remember when you got bit. Um, I think I talked to you shortly afterwards and you were mortified. Well the first time I sent I sent Harold a picture and said this thing just bit me. And you can't really grasp how disturbed I was um, until you actually see it. When you see this centipede, then you're like, oh, I understand why she actually is suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder because it was, it was horrible. But what I was telling them is the second time it happened, I was laying in my bed naked looking at my phone, and I feel something on my shoulder, which I thought was Annie's tail, because often Annie will, if she's being, you know, lazy her tail go like this and i look over and guess what motherfuckers i see the same kind of fucking centipede crawling on me i see the same kind crawling on me and in my brain i was like i'm not getting bit this time so i stayed calm i was gonna wait for it to like crawl off of me and it crawled down my back and then i just couldn't take it anymore and i I went like this, and it hit me on my fat roll. <sighs> what did it? What did it feel like? What did the bite feel like? The bite, and this is the way I'm describing it. It feels like someone's taking like a pin, like a needle, that has been heated up to probably fifty thousand degrees. So imagine you heat up a needle. Oh, imagine this. Imagine you take a sewing needle and throw it into an active volcano. You know where there's lava. Uh-huh. And you take that pin out of the active volcano, and then you stick it somewhere in somebody's body. That's what it feels like. Whoa! Hmm? And wh- and after you got bit, did it hook onto you, or did it fall off? It, I, I don't. I think it just bites you and runs away because it it it's stinging you with its front little pinchers because it thinks it's in danger. It can't. From what I understand, they can't see. They don't have eyesight, so really they see maybe uh, outlines of stuff, and they feel warmth. So I think he was crawling to me because I am very warm, right? Yeah, he was crawling like, ooh, this thing is nice and warm. What is this? He thought this big (laughs) mountain is warm, and when he discovered that I was just a large woman, um, that's when he tried to get me. Now, the first one I saved in a box for a couple days, and then Harold convinced me to let him go because he was he said that was cruel so i let him go this one i killed it and i don't care who who cares i don't care if if PETA or any kind of animal agency uh, sarah mclaughlin i don't care who cares i killed that thing because i'm tired of being assaulted by centipedes in my own living quarters and and, and since then would you say you're traumatized? My level of of trauma has has turned into me getting um, a netting for my bed so that no critters, whether that be a centipede, a fly, a mosquito, can get into my bed. I, I had a, a thing where I got in it and I zipped it up each night but that was very difficult for annie to get in and out it was very difficult for me when i was about to pee my pants every morning and it hangs over and i tuck it in around the bed and when i get in at night i tuck it under so that's how i'm sleeping every night and i'll sleep like that until i live in a so, so, what, so what you're saying is you're, you're a prisoner in your own house i wouldn't say i'm a prisoner i would just say um Prisoner's not a good word because I don't I don't feel unhappy or trapped down there. I just feel I have to I can't let my guard down in my own home. Which sucks because you want to sleep and did you sleep with the lights off after that? The, or how long <laughs> the first few weeks I slept with the lights on. I have since I got the the um the nets around my bed I can safely sleep with the lights off now. 
Oh, so you don't have a light, a night light or anything? You just sleep with the lights off now. I sleep with the lights off. I'm well, thinking, at least you, I'm at thinking. least you're past that. At least, at least you're, because uh, I know you were mortified for a few days. You wanted to move out, I remember. <laughs> and then I don't know how you got the idea of getting a tent, but that was actually a smart idea. Um, I don't know how Annie adjusted with you having that tent in there because, you know, cats like to play with everything and anything. But uh, I'm glad you're doing better. Thank you. Thank <laughs> I you think so the much. question is, any more centipedes since that um, incident? Those I have incidents. not seen any. I've not seen any centipedes since then. That doesn't mean they're not there because if I saw two, that oh. means there's more. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, no more centipedes as of now. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, you're not going to believe this. I'm wearing my headset with a microphone on it today again, folks, so I can call. I look like I'm about to do a TED Talk. <laughs> and I think a people TED are going to roast me online for it, but I don't care. Yeah, that, I, I like that little microphone, you know? You just, you don't have to hold it. You just, you know, and I think... It, it, you feel you feel a, like a professional, like with one of those. Oh, you feel like I feel you're, like you're, I'm about you're to meant. sell somebody a mortgage <laughs> online. An online? Oh wow! I feel like I'm about to sell an online mortgage class. How can I help you invest your money? That's what I look like I'm about to do. Okay, I was or or. Uh, what? Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say. I'm sorry. I only have about 12 minutes, but I was just going to say that I, um, first part of this podcast, I talked about the cruise and how you were out exploring and taking pictures. And I, I was explaining how at first I was like, man, I kind of want him to be with me the whole time. But then I was like, you paid for your vacation. I can't expect you to hang around with me while I'm working. Yeah. I, I walked a lot. I see a lot. Um, walked a lot. I, I just, I just wish I could relive it uh, another time because it, it, it was such a good time and there was so much going on that it, it doesn't hit you until it's over. Mm -hmm. And then when it's over, you're like, damn, like I was enjoying every moment, but at the same time I was doing a lot of walking, a lot of walking. Well, you, you do the walking that I can't do. Yeah, I did. I did walking for the both of us, you know, so. <laughs> I, uh, and I told him where, you, where you literally love to go exploring. You love to talk to people. The funniest guy in the world will just start talking to anybody. Hey, a uh, quick question for you. Where'd you get that shirt? He'll just like ask anybody anything. Or And that's, that's, a, that's a proven fact. I tend to, have to start my sentences with, hey, quick question. <laughs> why, why do that? I don't know. But, quick question. Uh, well, it's like a conversation maybe. starter. Yeah, it is. It is. Quick question. And I think I say it because, I mean, I, I, I want to get their attention and it works. It, it sure works. It sure works. Um, but yeah, I, I did a lot of walking. I've seen a lot. I missed a couple of things, a couple of acts that I really wanted to see. But Me too. Uh, there's always 2026. 2026. Yeah. You know what I wish I had? I wish I had a clone. So the clone could be like three clones, and so they could be in different parts of the ship at different times, and I and then I experience everyone, so I don't miss Same. nothing. That would be nice. Same. There's a there's a band having band practice. They sound so good. They're like which band? There's a there's a band like a couple of storage spaces down having practice right now. Uh-oh, can uh, the microphone's going to pick it up? I don't think so. This well, why don't you go over there and, uh, you know, you could be the lead singer for one of those bands. <laughs> you know, you know how to... It's a guy band. They don't want me in there. I've seen them before because <laughs> they were like, what are you doing? Because with the time that our power went out, I was like, is your power out? He's like, what are you doing there? Do, are they a Mexican band or what, what are they? <laughs> no, they're just... Regular guys, white guys, I guess. Oh, okay, for, for some was, reason I felt like it was going to be a Mexican band. It was young white guys. Oh, if it was a Mexican band, you know I'd be over there. Muy chata. You know what? All Mexican songs song sound the same. They're like they all with the trumpets and the horns. <coughs> that traditional um, Mexican music does, and also the new like um, what's it called? 
That Manga? Bad, that Bad Bunny uses all the time. Bad Bunny uses. He uses mm, it's, just... a, it's a style of music. Um, reggaeton. Reggaeton. Reggaeton is, is, uh, is that, that's not Mexican. That's more like, well, it comes from reggae, but that's more like that, that it got popular in Puerto Rico and then the Dominican Republic. Yeah. That it sounds a lot. Before, when I didn't really understand what it was, I was like, "Man, that all sounds the same." But now I'm I'm with the shits, as they say. She's she's with the shits. She's been around me enough where she can tell the difference of <laughs> what's what. And it's even gotten to the point where she knows certain lyrics. She knows certain names of certain Mexican groups, and I'm like even surprised. Like, oh wow, she knows a lot. I can. I'm even starting to hear. Um, different accents within Spanish. So I can different, differentiate, I can't different, differentiate what the accents are, but I can hear, oh, that person sounds like they're from a different place other than like Mexico or Spain. Yeah. Uh, the Cubans and the Puerto Ricans and the Dominicans, they have strong accents, man. The Mexicans have a totally different accent than the um, we all speak Spanish, but we all have our own accents and our own slang, you know. And uh, but for st- somehow we we know how to communicate with each other. But when I do talk to a Puerto Rican or a Dominican straight from the motherland, they talk so fast that it's even hard for me to sometimes keep up. I think you know? it's, it's like English. There's English, American English, English from England. There's like well, and- it's the way they roll it. They roll it. They'll talk like. <laughs> and it just sounds so bad. Well, see, you can say that. I I could never have done that. I would have been canceled if I did that. <laughs> <laughs> Grupo Ferme! Yeah, well, I'm glad your your trauma um, has gotten better, I guess. <laughs> Hopefully you don't get bit anymore by any centipedes or millipedes. Or any bugs for that matter. I'm not getting um, bit by anything because my my bed is under lock and key at this point. No bug well, is getting in there. Sorry. Have, have you ever had any nightmares or anything sensitive with any bugs? No, right? Not about bugs, but you want to hear about the dream I had last night? Ah. Uh, huh? Ah, uh, yeah. I dreamt that I was working back at the school. And there was a substitute teacher, and the substitute teacher told me, as the kids get on the bus, give them a handful of M&Ms out of this basket. So after each kid, uh-huh. after each kid went by me, I took my hand and put it in the basket and put the M&Ms in their hand, and they would take their m M&M and and eat them on the bus. And after every kid got on the bus, there were some of the M&Ms left in the basket, and I picked them up, and I was looking, and all the brown M&M's were actually ibuprofen. Oh, my God. Did, were you scared in your dream? <laughs> yes. And I go, oh, my God. And I go, it'll be fine. None of the kids will eat eat them. They'll see that they're not pills, and they won't eat them. And I start freaking Look. out. And I, I try to call the teacher the teacher that, that was supposed to be working that day, I'm like, oh, my God, I accidentally gave all the kids ibuprofen. She's like, well, how many? One or two? I'm like, no, like 12 each. So she had to come up to the school. Uh, we tried to call all the parents. None of the parents would answer their phones. So we had to drive to each parent's house. To, and we were like, has your child been experiencing any strange symptoms? <laughs> wow. You know what I thought you were gonna say? What? I thought you were gonna say that when you looked in the basket, you there were there were centipedes at the end. Oh no, I would have no ibuprofen, which okay. is worse. I'd rather there be centipedes because the child would not eat a centipede. The child would eat a brown ibuprofen because they think it's a brown M M&M. and M. Even I thought it was an M M&M and M until I looked closely, and realized I was giving all the <laughs> children multiple ibuprofens. Well, let's just say I'm glad that's a dream because I know <laughs> never, in a, never in a thousand years would you do that in real life. Oh God, no! I know how to identify an ibuprofen because I take so many of them a day. I would never give them ibuprofen to a child. <laughs> a child? Is it ibuprofen or ibuprofen? Well, Chelsea says ibuprofen. I say ibuprofen. I don't know what the okay. 
You could just say Advil well, that, or something. Oh, you could say Advil, yeah, but I wonder what the people think because I, I've always said, honestly, I, I think I've always said ibuprofen. Ibu. Well, Ibu. answer in the comments. How do you pronounce it? Ibu. 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 Well, they both sound about right. <laughs> Pills. Well, I'm swerving. Oh. I'm just uh, pulling. You're about to. Oh, you are you got about eight minutes left to get to work, so be careful. Sometimes she knows my schedule, too. Can I, <laughs> can I tell them the story of when your phone got run over? Yeah, go ahead. Well, first of all, I'll say Harry's fine. His phone is was destroyed. This is what happened. We're on the phone. He's talking on his AirPod. And I hear him say, oh, shit, what's that? And at that moment, silence. My brain says, oh, my God, he he hit something. He hit something. He got in a crash. Then after about... Did it just hit it? Wait. Go ahead, sorry. And then after about two seconds, I hear the phone come back again. And it sounded... This is what I was imagining in my head. I heard cars going... Shoom, shoom. but it also sounded like a rolling like a rolling sound like zoom, zoom. and i'm like oh my god he's he got an accident and the car's rolling and rolling and i just hear cars then the rolling sound stops and i just hear zoom, zoom. cars going by and i'm like mister 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 answer me and he, and then i hear hello his phone was on the top of his car, and he saw it. And he goes, oh, shit, what was that? It lands on the road. Cars start running over it. That was the sound I heard. But the whole time, even though the phone was smashed beyond comparison, it stayed connected to the AirPods. <laughs> Talk about trauma. My cortisol levels are out of this world. That was... What? What? Hello? Hello? You were cutting out. I'm sorry. Hello? Hello? You you were cutting out. I think a lot of the times he'll leave stuff on top of his car and and be doing this, that, and everything. But he'll always remember it. Well, this time he he didn't remember it and got distracted and the phone is dust. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. It was just breaking up, but that caused my, obviously my phone broke. I had to get a new phone. This was two days before the cruise. So in my head, I was like, I was like, damn, I, I, I can't go on vacation without a phone. So I had to hurry up and get a phone and I'm, it worked out. But that phone, nothing was bringing that, but that phone was, was gone. It was smashed beyond comprehension. Oh. Yeah, well, I'm just glad I'm I'm okay because oh god, um, it was horrifying. Because if I could just imagine from the uh, from put, if I put myself in your shoes, it didn't it didn't it didn't sound good. <laughs> it was horrifying. It was horrifying. Well, I'm gonna Alrighty, wrap it up, and you gotta get to work, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, everyone, say goodbye to Harold. He's going to work for the night, and I'm going to push stop recording, and I'm gonna go home and. Go lay, play with Annie. Play with Annie and lay in my netted bed. Sounds good. Bye, everybody. Bye, Harold. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye-bye. This guy will push his schedule to the limit. He's got literally five minutes, and he will wait until he has one minute. Um, What was I going to say? Don't even remember. Anyway, thanks for being here again. Uh, love y'all. See you next week. Next week we'll have a guest and we'll be painting. Love y'all so much. Bye-bye.